Social Control. Life at Louis XIV Versailles. What really happened? In 1682, in a very unusual move, Louis XIV moved his entire royal court to his new palace at Versailles. The nobles were now forced to live at Versailles and take part in long, strange rituals every day. But why did the French king do this and what did he achieve? This is Short History with Magnus. Hi and welcome to my channel. If you like this presentation, please like, subscribe and share this video. The story of Versailles starts in earnest after Louis XIV's visit to the superintendent of finances, Marquis Nicolas Fouquet's chateau, Vaux le Vicomte. Fouquet had a glittering career and acquired enormous wealth. The coat of arms of Fouquet's family traditionally showed a squirrel and bore the motto, What heights will he not scale? No doubt a very ambitious man. He had also just upgraded and renovated his chateau so much that it rivaled the king's palace in Paris, both in beauty and splendor, and he invited the king and all the important nobles to a grand opening party. Spoiler alert! Rivaling the king in anything is never a good idea. After his visit to Fouquet's chateau, the king announced that he was going to Nantes for the opening of the meeting of the provincial estates of Brittany. He required his ministers, including Fouquet, to go with him. Nicolas Fouquet was arrested and the king had him imprisoned from 1661 until his death in 1680. After this, the king became obsessed with building a new palace. A palace that would dwarf all other palaces. He built his new seat of power at Versailles. Louis XIV installed his royal court at Versailles. He required all the great nobility of France to come live at Versailles for at least part of the year. Members of the royal family and those with important roles had very nice apartments overlooking the gardens, while courtiers of lesser importance were accommodated in very small apartments on the city side or in the palace outbuildings, such as the Grand Commune or the stables. Louis XIV rejected requests from nobles who spent little time at Versailles with retorts such as, He is a man I never see. A testament to the king's skill at social control. At court, courtiers had to follow a strict etiquette. Meticulous rules established the order of precedence and laid down who could approach the most important figures of the court, as well as where and when. Body language and manners of speech were also ruled by strict codes that varied subtly depending on the circumstances. Rules also governed the titles to be used to address other persons and even the right to sit down or use an armchair, chair or stool. Every day started with the dressing ritual, this was an elaborate ritual in both the king and the queen's bedroom that began at 8.15 a.m., when he or she would be dressed by their chosen courtiers. Participation in this ceremony was highly coveted because it provided the opportunity to influence the king or queen and ask for favors. This is ridiculous. This, madame, is Versailles. The ceremony, which accorded importance to even the holding of the king's candlestick, but one of the most important roles was to empty the king's chamber pot in the morning. Yes, you heard me right, disposing of the king's feces was a great honor and was one of the most coveted positions at court. This ritual was followed by the grand lover at 8.30 a.m., when the king would leave his bedroom and enter the gallery and proceed to mass. This ceremony was less exclusive and required the king to walk through the corridor amongst his court. Consequently, it was often overwhelmed by courtiers, with hundreds routinely queuing outside. These rituals continued through the rest of the day with strict etiquette. Like when the king and queen ate dinner, everybody of importance was present, not dining themselves, but watching the royal couple eat. Oh, how the days must have just flown by. Courtiers with a role were said to be established in the court. 
Such roles were inherited or could be bought, often for an extremely high price, and came with a function or duty. Serving the king in the army or in high-level administration was the primary way of winning royal favor, although the art of court appearances remained essential. Individual talents or virtues, such as beauty or intellect, rivaled with stunning finery as a means of attracting the monarch's attention. By affording a bigger role to the court than Henry IV and Louis XIII had done, Louis XIV restored a sense of service among the nobility. At the time of his ascension in 1643, the king had inherited challenging conditions. France was composed of fragmented provinces ruled by noble elites, characterized by their strong local identities. They constituted rival spheres of political authority that threatened national unity and the stability of Louis XIV's rule. Nicolas Fouquet had even rivaled the king in wealth and power, something the king recognized was a huge threat to his monarchy. By frequently requiring the nobles' presence in Versailles, Louis XIV ensured his nobles were geographically distant from their local power bases and armies. The rituals provided courtiers with critical access to the monarch, and thus became the mechanism through which courtiers could advance, sustain, or even lose their rank. Their duties outside of Versailles became less important, almost irrelevant. By doing this, the king made the nobles argue over who was going to empty his chamber pot or hand him his socks, not plotting to overthrow him. Also introducing very expensive fashion trends at court for the nobles to follow, instead of spending their money on armies and power, the nobles spent their money on clothes and jewelry to wear at court. Also ranking the nobles, giving those he liked important positions and in nice apartments close to the king, he created a fierce rivalry between the nobles. He in this way, also made absolutely sure that everybody understood who the most important and powerful person in France was, by forcing them to fight over who was going to hand him his socks or empty his chamber pot in the morning. In this way, Louis XIV made the nobility politically irrelevant, and became an absolute ruler, power that the other monarchs in Europe at the time only could envy him. Unfortunately for his family dynasty, the Bourbons, his great-grandson botched everything up, 74 years later and the French Revolution happened. There had never been a more powerful monarch in Europe, neither before or after him. Illustrated perfectly when he uttered the words, I myself am the nation. If you like this presentation, please like, subscribe and share this video. And I hope to see you in the next one.